In this video, you will learn to describe who are the primary actors in cybercrime and what are the motives of each. So, what is security? The, um, within the principles of security, you frequently will hear about CIA, and that talks about confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. So it's actually a little wider than that, right? So confidentiality is a major principle. And this is where only the sender and the receiver can understand the message. So if it is uh, intercepted midway, we'll take a look at some diagrams with that, that those interceptors will not be able to understand the message. So fundamentally, the sender, which would be Bob, right in the uh, in the literature sends the encrypted message and Alice on the other end receives and decrypts the message associated with this is authentication where the two senders Alice and Bob in our example need to confirm the identity of each other before sending a message Equally important for authentication is integrity, that the sender and receiver, Alice and Bob, want to have some assurances that the message has not been changed, right? Whether this is going to be in transit or whether it's going to be in some intermediate stage on the receiver's end. Most importantly, has it been changed? And they want to be able to ascertain if it's been changed without de detection. We will look at several mechanisms for that to happen. Last is the access and availability, right? So that the um, <clears throat> security services, the IT services that are available in the enterprise have the correct access control mechanisms in place and also have um, significant availability to allow the enterprise to operate according to spec. I am a big fan of Sun Tzu. <clears throat> the Art of War teaches us not to rely on the likelihood of the enemy's not coming, but our own readiness to receive him. Not on the chance of his not attacking, but rather on the fact that we have made our position unassailable. So this speaks to that principle of, well, it couldn't happen to me. Largely, you need to be ready. A follow-on to this, the combination of space, time, and strength that must be considered as the basic elements of this theory of defense makes this a fairly complicated matter. Consequently, it's not easy to find a fixed point of departure, right? So security is a complex field that's dynamic and changing. Before we jump into the dynamics and the interaction with cryptography, let's take a look at the uh, playing field so that we can get the lexicon, the terms defined, and the actors. Well, so Alice, Bob, and Trudy, you see this throughout cryptography literature. And so it's A, B, and T are the actors, but back in the 60s, in a few papers, these were given names, Alice, Bob, and Trudy, and they continue today. So uh, Bob and Alice, right, want to communicate securely. It can be for any reason, a personal reason or a business reason. Trudy, who is the interceptor, desires to intercept, delete, admin, um, add messages, change messages, effectively a bad actor. So we take a look at the diagram here on slide seven, and we see Alice on the right-hand side, and Alice has some data. This could be an email, it could be a note, <coughs> it could be a web page, a number of elements with that. And she secures this message, moving from clear text to cipher text, transmits it across a channel. Now the channel can be any any form of transmission that we that we can consider. So certainly email, uh, direct transfer, file transfer protocol, it could be a text message these days. Back in the in the Napoleonic period, this would be a letter that a young naval midshipman may carry between Whitehall and other parts of London. 
So the channel, right, is the transmission mechanism. And within the channel is the data. This is the payload, right? Control messages. Who is it going to? How long is it good for? What's the address of the recipient, Bob, in this case? You know, obviously, in the uh, Internet world, we look at IP addresses. We look at MAC addresses. In the uh, manual world, we think about the Napoleonic era when British intelligence started its ascendancy. This would be a name and a physical mailing address. So physical mailing addresses are manual interpretations of control messages. So Bob receives the message, decodes it, and has the clear text that Alice had sent to him. Trudy has the ability to intercept these messages on the channel, but because of the secure nature of the encryption, the protection for that, cannot uh, read, or delete, or alter those messages. So who could Bob and Alice be? Well, they could be Bob and Alice. There's no reason that it's not, the, not real people. But that also could be a client-server relationship, right? Client servers in banking elements, DNS servers communicating with clients during the IP lease phase. Certainly uh, network routers, right, exchanging and, and information with other routers and updating tables. And, there, you know, there's other examples such as uh, firewalls communicating with security intelligence systems, security intelligence systems communicating with database protection. So we have a sender and a receiver, many, many uh, instantiations of that. So um, on our next slide, nine right now the uh, NIST group from the US government right um, has a, a very vibrant computer security practice and they have a definition for computer security that's been provided the protection afforded to an automated information system in order to attain the applicable objectives of preserving the integrity availability and confidentiality of information system resources. It includes hardware, software, firmware, information, data, and telecommunications. So taking a look in reverse order, right, the scope of computer security is the OSI protocol stack that starts with applications on the top, moves down to the uh, presentation and the session, down through the transport layers, down into the physical layers. All of those are within scope of computer security. And you'll notice that it says the protection provided to an in automated information system. So this is protection for not only the platforms, the host software, but the information that these systems are processing. 